Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. ESXi5 doesn't have that Linux-based service console that ESX4 had. Now what we have is called a direct console user interface that allows us to do some initial configuration of our ESXi host in order to get it on the network. And once we get it on the network, we can use the vSphere client or some of the command line tools in order to configure our ESXi host. So if we're on the network already, we're probably in good shape. And when we initially install our ESXi server, it's going to pick a network adapter that's connected to the network and it's going to use DHCP for the management network. So if you're using both of those, maybe the first NIC and a DHCP address to configure your ESXi server, you can probably connect to it right now with the vSphere client. You can see the IP address it picked up here. If not, we need to do some initial network configuration, then we have to press F2 at this screen. We need to log in. So I'll go ahead and type in my root password that I specified during installation. And you can see our first option here. We can configure our password if we like. Mine's fine. Most likely we're going to need to configure the management network. So I'll select this option, go ahead and hit enter. Let's hit enter to our network adapters. We can see I've got four network adapters in this particular server. Now it picked the first one that was connected for the management network. That's right for me. But if it wasn't, let's say I wanted to use VMNIC2 for the management network, then I would just use the down arrow, hit the space bar to select VMNIC2, and use the space bar to unselect VMNIC0. Now you'll notice we can select two or more NICs. That's if we're using teaming and using two or more NICs in order to make our management network redundant. The NIC I'm using is VMNIC0, so I'll go ahead and select that and hit enter. If we're specifying a VLAN on our management network, we can do that here by typing in a VLAN number. I'm not, so I'll just go ahead and hit enter. Our IP configuration, we can set a static IP address here. So I'm just going to hit the space bar. That'll allow me to use a static IP address. And I'm using 192.168.6.1. Eighty-five, actually 187 for the IP address of this particular host and the subnet mask is fine 255.255.255.0 and the gateway is fine but we could change it here if we'd like go ahead and hit enter if we're using IP version 6 we can configure that to get it on the network so we can specify our static IP version 6 address DNS configuration is the next option. I'll go ahead and hit enter. And specify our primary DNS server. Mine is 192.168.6.200 and an alternate is 192.168.6.201 and the host name for this particular ESXi server is going to be PHX ESX I 02. So I'll go ahead and hit enter. And actually, it's going to be .itdvds.local. Normally, we want to use the fully qualified domain name for the host name. So I'll go ahead and hit enter. And if we have any custom DNS suffixes, we can add them here. I don't. So I'll just leave the default. And once we've got it configured the way we want, we just hit escape and apply changes. I'll just go ahead and hit Y to apply the changes. So a couple other things we can do from this console. We can restart the management network we, if we'd like. This can be helpful to renew a DHCP lease. We can test the management network. It'll, be, it'll basically uh, ping our gateway and ping the primary and alternate DNS servers. Also try to resolve the host name that's configured. So that's normally a good thing to do just to make sure everything's up and running. We can restore network settings if we've gotten to a point where configuration is all messed up and we just want to start from scratch. Here we can configure our keyboard troubleshooting options. We're going to talk about that in a second. We can also view system logs if we're having a problem, view support information, or reset the system configuration entirely. So at this point, we should be on the network and be able to access it with our vSphere client. 
If not, then we'd want to go in to Configure Management Network, make sure the right NIC was selected, and make sure the IP address is correct in the gateway.